Hi there, folks, and welcome to Paint Along with Matthew Palmer. In this series, I want to take you through every single step of watercolour painting, literally starting right at the beginning, and we'll talk about mixing colours, the equipment you need, and, of course, get you started in those first paintings. I'm joined by three students today who have not really painted before, and it'll be fantastic to see how they progress. So hopefully I can inspire you and them and give you the confidence that you need to get started in watercolour painting. Let's say hello to the gang. In the centre, we've got Mandy, who you might recall from last time. Hello. On the side, we've got Harry. Hello. And we've got Nigel. Hello. The first painting is a wonderful autumn landscape with an open meadow, and the techniques you'll be learning are wetting to wet skies, painting distant trees, mixing greens, and adding foreground detail to give depth to your paintings. First of all, what I want to do is get some masking tape and stick it to somebody's clothes just to take the stickiness away from this one. Round about a third to a quarter of the way up a sheet of watercolour paper. Just going to stick it down all the way across and then we'll mix some colours. Using a nice size 20 brush for this one. Mixing up some basic sky colours really. Plenty of water and a nice blob of natural blue. Nice and juicy colour for this one. This is a nice natural sky blue. Clean your brush and the second colour it's going to be a pale, natural yellow. That could be slightly lighter than the blue. Pop that across there as well. Put that brush to one side and using a large tree brush, mix up some nice thick burnt sienna, or as I call it, bont sienna. <laughs> Depends where you come from, really, you know. Yorkshire. Yorkshire. Yorkshire quality there, look. Burnt sienna. A nice bright autumn colour. So that means we can paint some nice bright autumn trees across the bottom of the landscape. So using the size 20, or the big one as we're going to call it, <laughs> we get the water on there and water it down all the way towards the tape. Is it a smooth paper there, Matthew? Or? It's actually a medium texture. It's what you call a knot texture. That means it's not rough and it's not smooth. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere in the middle. <laughs> so, you didn't just make that up. No, no, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a proper artistic quote, that one. <laughs> Honestly. Nice and clean, nicely covered. Of course, you're working against that drying on you as well. So using the yellow, natural yellow. Very simple sky, just from halfway. Imagine you're painting your walls at home and just literally bring it through from side to side down to the bottom. Just a nice background for your sky. Then go for the natural blue. Get that across the top. And you can see that's a nice, clean, fresh blue there. Leaving one or two spaces for clouds. When the blue comes down towards the actual yellow, it's going to mix and go more grey. It goes on very simple. It's always nice to get a bit of tissue at the side, just in case you need it. You can wipe your size, twi <laughs> <laughs> you can wipe your size 20 <laughs> on that one and just work it across. <laughs> the big end. Because I'm working on a slope, that might turn into a bit of rain, but that's fine. Put that away and use the the tree brush, the large tree brush, using the bont sienna, sorry, burnt sienna, stipple the tree brush, and just work across the bottom and just sort of dance up and down with your brush, that is, and just tap it. Tap the paint on your paper as you work through, going higher, going lower. Work it across, take it nice and small, take it up on the opposite side, literally just stippling. Tap, tap, tap as you work your way through. Is what stippling is? Tapping? Yeah. Sort of bouncing across dabbing your paper, it. I would say, yeah. actually, yeah. Dab. Dab, dab, It's a dab. dab or a tap. It's dancing across your paper, up and down. Imagine the shapes of the trees as you do it. Is there a particular way you're holding the brush when you do it? Yeah, it's actually holding it quite close to the end. Almost like you're writing, I guess. And it, if you're working flat to your table, you can almost rest on the actual table as well. It helps, I think. Right. right. It's quite a gentle technique, really, I guess you could say. And it's just lightly skimming it. And because the paper's slightly wet, it's just going to slightly bleed or spread into the sky. I put a little tiny bit of blue with the burnt sienna. That's the natural blue, and it's going to darken the colour slightly, but only a little bit. It's gone a bit darker there. Tap it right at the bottom, work across, and it'll put the shadows at the bottom of the trees. Oh. Bouncing along, you can see, very loosely, very quickly. Does it need to be lower in the middle, then? I think it helps. I think it makes a nicer composition, nicer to look at. It draws you into the centre almost if you do that. 
Might even go slightly darker, touch more blue in there. You can keep working away on this one, you just keep adding the darkness, different layers to this. Even come back to the brown if you want to as well. Stipple your brush in your palettes, stipple it on the paper, and you can see now I can really go for this and get some nice detail in there. That's it. So if I leave those middle few untouched, it sort of leads you through more, mm -hmm. yeah? Okay, so while that dries off, let's see how Harry gets on. Right, Harry, it's your turn. All right. Let's do this, okay? Start with the big one. Yep, size 20. You've got your board and your paper stuck down, and you've got a piece of masking tape across the horizon. Perfect. You've stuck it on Mandy's jumper. Yes, I did. So ready for I plucked her. <laughs> Straight into your water using your big one. So wet it through top to tape. And it's best to hold it right down there. Yeah. And hold it quite low down as you work through. I all the way across. You can see the light bouncing oh, off. Oh, yeah. You can see the bits you're missing. See what's wet and what's not, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, yeah. It's like my kitchen now. Have you got a wet kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oops. That's it. Okay. And then the yellow goes on first. Always put your cleanest colours on first. So this is so Harry Keeling's yellow. first few seconds as an artist. It's a big moment. Dun, it's dun, a big dun, moment. Dun, dun. Halfway. Halfway. Horizontal brush stroke. Let's take that down all the way to the bottom. Leave some white bits. Imagine the clouds and things working yeah. through. That'll do you. Perfect. Clean your brush. I'm finished. <laughs> Pick up the blue. Pick up the blue. Natural blue. Natural right blue. Right at the top. Right at the top. All the way across. Sweep it across. It's very really It's a bit it? pale. It's a bit pale. It's a bit pale. So we need to thicken up. More blue. So more blue in the mixture. There you go. Yeah, it's, a, it's there's an autumn scene I'm doing here. It's got a bit of As rain. you can see. Yeah. This is probably the best painting I've done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the first one. Yeah. Oh, it is the first one, yes. That's fine. Pop that brush away and then we'll go for the tree brush. All right. We'll go for the tree brush. Pick up the brown, autumn colour. This is this, called burnt sienna. This is burnt sienna one. Yeah. Yep. That's right. Right. I and it's larger that. trees and smaller trees as you work across towards the centre. That's it. Just dab it. Oh, that's right. I remember now. Fill it in. Some Imagine the shapes of the trees. All these bits are going to be filled in. Yeah. Larger, smaller. Yeah. It sort of draws you into the centre. Yeah. On that one. There you go. There's a badger there, but he's just he's hiding in the bushes. He's gone. Put some blue in with the brown, so it darkens the colour. And just put it in there? Yeah, mean? just mix it through. It goes more of a darker brown oh, at yeah. that stage, yeah? Yep. That's your first mixing experience. Cool. Did you catch Are you that? excited? That's perfect. <laughs> I think we've done well. Now what? Bring this right at the bottom. Just going to give shadow. All the way yeah. across. Let it work in. The paper's nice and wet, so the trees are going on nice and wet. Mm -hmm. And it's going to give you like a misty, distant feel to it. As the paper yes. dries, it does soften up quite a lot as well. That seems a bit straight don't it's a bit harsh it. yeah so if you dab your brush on the tissue take off most of it yeah and then work across the top line and it just softens things in slightly oh yes yeah, that's better it's a badger blending brush now a badger blender <laughs> it's a badger blender <laughs> is that allowed yeah, blending, it's legal. blending it's legal. badges the tree brush is actually made out of badger and squirrel here is it which is a nice combination <laughs> <laughs> does it smell like badger, <laughs> smell like badger. <laughs> jobs are good and well done thank you so while mandy and nigel tackle this stage Let's have a recap of what we've done so far. Mark out the horizon using masking tape about a quarter of the way up. Wet the paper and drop in the natural yellow and then the natural blue for the sky. Use the tree and texture brush to stipple in the background trees with burnt sienna. Right, so that's nice and dry there then, folks. While yours is drying off, we'll take the tape off nice and steady. Peel it away from it so it doesn't rip any of the paper. Don't forget that you took the stickiness away as well by sticking it on Nigel's back. Put that away. And then what we'll do now is start to bring some detail into the trees and make them look more like trees. First thing I want to do is use a craft knife. Now, being very careful this because it's very sharp. Make sure you've got your letters from your parents again. We're just going <laughs> to scratch this upwards and actually imagine the distant trees, silver birch trees in the distant forest just shining through. Obviously, taking as much time as you want on doing this one, really. It works better in one direction. Sometimes it might work better down as opposed to up. So I'm just going to put a few scratches. And of course, it's quite addictive doing this as well. One thing not to fear is actually that you're going to rip your paper because it's fine. It's thick enough to take this. What I'm going to do is use what we call a rigger brush, OK, if I can get it out there. A rigger brush, a size 2 rigger brush, which is a nice pointy long brush. Using a nice detail colour, this is called natural grey. Tiny bit of water, plenty of colour. It's a nice neutral grey, and this is perfect for doing the fine branches on the actual tree. Weaving in between 
the actual silver birch trees, if you like, and these could be oak trees, any kind of tree. So you don't do it between. next to the scratching, but you do it in between. I think you can go anywhere, work it through, use the nice point of the brush. And when you do this, it makes sense to do it more so on the sides, the detail at the sides, leaving less in the middle. A few sort of winter trees just starting to poke through. Just coming back to the tree brush for a second, this is the large one again. I'm going to be using burnt sienna, tap it in the palette, tap it in the actual mixing area so the bristles open up. Tap this in the burnt sienna, quite a thick, strong colour, quite heavy. Use the brush nice and open and very lightly, just kind of tap over the tops of the trees on the side, give it that extra little bit of detail. And you can see it's just going over the tops of these branches that you've just painted in. It's surprising they're going to give a nice detail effect to these trees. And I think that's a nice time to leave that to dry. It's your turn again. Oh, here we go. Right, Mandy, you can rip your tape off there, nice and steady. Towards me. Towards you, away from the painting so it don't rip anything. There you go. Perfect. Nice. Perfect. Again, using your craft knife, you're going to scratch in some silver birch trees against the nice okay. autumn colours. Have you got it sideways on? It depends how your paper is, because if you put your paper on that way, it might work different to if it's that way, because it's got a grain like wood, you oh know, right. and sometimes it works better upwards, sometimes it works better downwards. Makes a nice, uh, a nice noise. Yeah. Yeah, like uh, nails on chalkboard <laughs> type thing, isn't it? Yeah. I always put a bit of scratching on Is my paintings. Not? I think it looks great. Perfect. It's also good for water. We'll get to that later in the series, but you can use it for putting reflections in water as well. Size two, doing using the dark grey, the natural grey. Don't have too much paint on your brush. Something to take away is almost twist your bristles, twist your brush as you pick your paint up and it gets a nice point on the end of your brush. Right. Start at the bottom, work up in the direction it grows in nature. Everything grows up. What about in New Zealand? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. A nice gentle flick. And that'll fill in the gaps in. That's it, yeah. There you go. So we just want something over this side there, don't we? Some yeah. nice detailed trees like these ones there. You can tell you've done that before. <laughs> <laughs> few there, okay. I think. And then what we'll do then is use this large tree brush. Stipple inside the burnt sienna. Mm -hmm. If you want to tap it on the side of your palette as well, it might just open your bristles up yeah. a bit more, yeah? Get rid and of And very it. gently hold it like you're writing your name, rest it, and then tap. There you go. When, when you finish using the brush, do the bristles naturally go back to the... I tell people that brush is like a new pair of shoes. It takes a little while to bed in, but once it's bed in, it stays open, and the more open it is, the better. Oh, right. Okay. That's Get carried it. away. <laughs> Perfect, well done. Now, while Nigel and Harry work on this stage, let's have a quick recap. Scratch out the silver birch trees with a sharp craft knife. Use the rigger brush in natural grey for the darker tree trunks. Finish off the trees by stippling more burnt sienna into the tree canopy. That's it for part one folks, so join us after the break we will put some foreground interest in the painting to finish it off. <laughs>